Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. I've got a cool video. I'm really hoping this works out for Laurel and I because we have a lot of honey to bottle and I've heard from a lot of my professional buddies that Swinty makes a really good unit. So we're going to assemble this, show you the entire process of throwing it together, the different options that it has, and it's pretty complicated and has a computer, so I'm going to need Laurel's help. Let's do this. The Swinty unit is very easy to assemble, but this video can make it even faster. So we have our base plate and we have the neck. There's also a triangle piece that connects the two, kind of reinforces that and makes it extremely strong. Everything's like eighth inch stainless steel. So get that triangle feet in there first, and then you have these notches slash feet on the back of the neck. One of them just went in, and now I'm going to bend it ever so slightly to pop that other one in there. And once you get it all in, it is very strong. And this is important. That motor and pump, very heavy. And it's actually slightly tilted upwards by design so it can withstand a lot of weight up on top because you can put a funnel on this thing. As much as five gallons of honey can sit up on top of that thing. And that's really neat. As you can see, we're just throwing in a little screw here with a four millimeter wrench. Just get that nice and tightened down. Everything just needs to be hand tightened. Now we have the back of the pump housing. It's quite heavy, but we need to make sure that we get what I like to call the back plate mounted on. And it's very basic. Just make sure it's going the right direction. And I put it on the plate to rise it up a little bit because it actually will set down a little bit below the pump box. And so that just made it a lot easier having it off of the table. And we just speed that on up. Now, if you don't have a lot of muscle, you may want someone to help you with this. It's quite heavy to throw this on here. I love how strong this plate is, though. This is all made to last the other unit that I had, not from Swinty, but another company. The neck was way underbuilt, and it went out eventually. Now, this little piece right here, very self-explanatory. It adjusts to your random jar sizes and shapes. Does a great job. Now we're going to take the top part off right now and throw the stainless steel elbow and this nut that holds it in place. Again, very strong. That nut is extremely heavy. I love it. Everything can just be hand tightened. Now this is a little filling device. There's another one. It has two washers, at least that's what I call them, to seal it. And I've never had any honey drip out of it on me so far. And it just fits down into another nut and it'll go on the opposite side underneath the gear and pump housing. Again, everything can just be hand tightened. We're going to do a video soon that's actually going to show you more about calibration and filling. Now, in my left hand, on your right, that is more for creamed honey, in my opinion. And then this is to keep air from getting into the line if you're not filling. I'll explain it in a minute. The bag is just extra parts in case something gets damaged. The 4 millimeter wrench that I just had does not come with the unit. Now this is one of the ways that you can fill the jars. It is a little clicking device. Very easy to mount. Just make sure that you have the black knob facing out to the right of the unit. And then we're just going to screw it right on in. It adjusts left and right and forward and backwards to accommodate any size jar and shape that you may have. And I ended up just hand tightening mine, but there is a piece in there that's a little bit tricky that you may want to get a wrench and not crank down too hard, but get it tight enough that it won't swivel back and forth. And then you have your little lever right there. Now, this device hooks into the back just like the foot pedal, 
and that little notch at the bottom right there always needs to go to the bottom of this plug. And then you can twist it in and screw it in so it can't accidentally pull on out or anything like that. The foot pedal is great. Uh, my daughter, Kathleen, who's 10, she definitely loves the foot pedal the most. The biggest con I have with this unit is when you plug it in, it turns on. When you unplug it, it turns off. I like a switch. Now, that little pad for that pot pad right there was made by my daughter, Kathleen, for Christmas for me, and it's definitely my one of my favorite color schemes right there, so awesome. This water was boiling just a few minutes ago, and we are heating up the end of this hose that is supplied with the Swinty unit. And heating it up like this will make it 10 times easier to get it onto that stainless steel elbow. We didn't have it in the water very long at all. And look how easy it is to throw this on here. Go ahead and try to do it without it and see the difference. It also comes with this hose clamp, and it is made really good. I like it. A lot of times you have to get your own from a hardware store, and it's not that they don't work, but that one is way nicer. In order to use the unit, we have to prime the gearbox every single time. There's got to be honey down in there, or you'll damage it. You don't run an engine without oil. You don't run a honey pump without honey in it. Now, if you're doing it from a bucket or anything that is not got a little bit of pressure behind it, you'll need to put this in place. I showed this to you earlier with the other valve, which is for creamed honey, in my opinion. And you can just see how I staggered that out right there to make a great seal. This is so when it's done pumping, no air comes from the bottom and works its way up into the pipe. And then we start getting air into our jars more. We'll just hand tighten that. And I did get a little bit of a wrench to tighten that pipe down just a little bit more. I'm going to do a little bit more on calibrating this in a video where we just do some filling, but I zeroed out the jar and now I have the amount adjusted slightly from what it should be. This is a one pound jar because there's some air in the line. This is the first jar that I've ever tried to fill with it. Now as you can see there is air in the line and it should be 16. So we are a little under a pound because there's so much air taking the place where honey should have been coming out of the line. So this is important to make sure that we're giving our customers the right amount. This unit though has been told by myself, uh, been told to me, <laughs> that it will pay for itself before too long because of how much honey that you don't overfill because it's that accurate. But you definitely want to make sure that there's no air in the line. So I raised it up just a little bit and we're still a little bit under a pound so it's very easy to adjust. You can adjust speed. We'll do a video on that soon. Thanks for watching the assembly. All right, so we've assembled it and we've begun tinkering around with programming it. This is the first time I've run Honey through it. So I've got a little bit of experimenting to do, but it looks like it's gonna be a great machine. As we got to the end of the video and we started filling these jars up, it was a little bit light on the honey and I think it would have been just about perfect were it not for some of the air that was still in the line affecting how much weight was put into the jar. So that's one of the things that we're going to have to adjust. I think it is best, and this is what Swinty recommends anyways, is if you're doing buckets, is to have the funnel above you can pour into it. Um, we have the line right now going into a bucket, but it's, it's even with the table. And granted, the honey is about 70-something degrees Fahrenheit right now, which is not ideal. Um, we're going to try it out when the honey is about 100 degrees, 95, somewhere in that area. And when we get done with experimenting with it, we're actually going to hook it up into our Dadent 70-gallon tank, where it'll be feeding um, at the base of the 70-gallon tank. So we'll have all of that head pressure from the honey and, and gravity doing its thing. So that'll 
long term be way better all the way around because it's less work on the motor which is always good and that's something that you have to consider if you're bottling a lot is what's my setup and how is that affecting my machine and how much it's having to work so this is super exciting I'm really anxious to do more videos if you liked it let me know if you'd like to see more about calibrating and experimenting with the machine and I'm really thankful uh, to have a unit like this I think Laurel's gonna be pretty excited this little lever right here seems to work pretty good I think we're gonna try the foot pedal next so I think I'm gonna like that alright we'll see you in the next one